so that we can get through as much as possible, I'm going to elide two questions. Do you feel that children are listened to sufficiently regarding the use of restraint? And do you feel there's enough independent scrutiny of restraint when it happens? Well, my simple answer to those two questions is no and no. Um, we commissioned a separate report from User Voice. There's some joint uh, work done by User Voice for both the Youth Justice Board and ourselves. And there was a separate report also commissioned from User Voice by us uh, where they spoke to children very specifically about the issues of restraint, in addition to the conversations that I personally have had with children and young people. Um, and what comes up loud and clear from that User Voice report, as well as from my own experience, is that. Um, children don't feel listened to, and they're making very sensible proposals. They're saying, please talk to us more. I have the quotations in front of me. Um, please talk to us more. Um, don't jump into using force. Uh, please de-escalate more. Um, I mean, some of them are extraordinarily powerful, actually. Um, with youngsters talking about uh, how it's left them feel, and it's a, a proposal to do it a bit more gently. That's interesting that restraint could be done more gently. And go easier, start just to take you to the room and not jump on you. Um, so, so youngsters, uh, I mean, what worries me is, as some of them think that actually restraint um, should be used more than I think it should, but that's part of their background, talking about children coming from very violent homes. In terms of the, the, the oversight, um, <clears throat> I would like to see more scrutiny of what's happening on restraint, and I would like to see consistency across uh, the whole of the estate, really. We've got the three different types of, of institutions. Um, I, I struggle to understand why they're all subject to different standards. Um, I would like to see just good practice everywhere, really, which is a um, higher staff-child ratio, better environments, more welfare-based uh, set of arrangements, much less restraint taking place, really restraint being what it should be, absolutely as a matter of last resort, and no more than that, and um, a, a, a more creative way of ensuring that, as the children say, could people please talk to them and take them to their rooms and do it, you know, work with them more gently in a sense, really, rather than resort to restraint. Earlier you said that we're wholly used, opposed to the use of pain techniques in restraint. Um, some would say, and I've certainly heard it argued forcefully, that that's actually just unrealistic. That there are some children, often physically very substantial people, who kick off, and the only way to restrain them is to use um, pain such as forcing back of the thumb or something of that kind. What do you say to those assertions that are made by many practitioners? Right, um. I've been in children's in the children's world for well over 30 years um, and have worked with very very troubled youngsters myself uh, and I would say it is unacceptable there were standards that we must set as a civilized society and there is something noxious really about the state sanctioning the use of pain on children and to people say to people who say that that is essential, um, and talk, as you say, about somehow these children being large, I think there's often a subtext, and black. Uh, I would hold up the example of Gareth Myatt, who weighed, I have to say, the same as me, and I'm not the biggest person in the universe. Um, so we need to be child-centered. Um, I don't think that it is acceptable, and indeed it's not acceptable in terms of our, our obligations under the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, to use pain on children um, as a state-sanctioned way of dealing with children. It just must be stopped. There are always ways of finding different and better ways to do things. I'll just simply quote to you um, the incarceration of children at Yarnswood, which we held out against um, ever since the first commissioner came into post. Uh, and we were told, until the coalition government came in, that there is no alternative but to put families into Yarnswood. And the minute it was announced that an alternative had to be found, an alternative was found. It was not easy, but it was possible, and it has been done. And I think the same standards should be set in relation to this. It is simply not acceptable. 
Can I ask if anybody at the back would like to raise any point through me? Right. Um, we're very grateful to you. When you leave, please would you pass my and our good wishes to your husband, whom I understand had a motor accident yesterday and was injured, and you've actually come here from looking after him on his bed of pain. You would appreciate that, thank you. But may, may I conclude by bringing children's voices right into the room? Can I just make, yes, read two quotations? Thank you very much indeed. Um, the first is, um, I've been, these are very, very recent. I've been restrained several times. It used to be a release for me from all the stress I had and anger from all the abuse. But as I've got older, I hate getting restrained. It is invading our space. You could get us to calm down in different ways instead of putting hands on us 24-7. And the second one I will share with you is, I was on the unit and I was very angry and upset, and I decided to run into the enhanced area, and I refused to return. Then the staff dragged me to my pad, and I kicked a member of staff, so they threw me on the floor and twisted me up. There has to be a better way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.